So we got that love of good Mosin. I miss the days of being able to get Mosins for like $69, $89. Yeah. Three, two, one. It is not the critic who counts. Not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles. Or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena. Whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood. Who strives valiantly. Who errs. Who comes short again and again. Who spends himself in a worthy cause. Who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement. And who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. So that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. Hey everybody, it's Eric and Roy. And thanks for checking out another HatchetCast episode. And today we're going to talk about training. Um, with today's episode, we want to kind of break down kind of some ways that you can have some expectation management about training as well as how to how to screen your trainers um, and pick the right classes that are good for you also with where you're at in your journey and also kind of how to sniff out a bad class you know we've we've been burned with some bad classes ourselves mm -hmm. yeah we've um, kind of covered this before in the path mm -hmm. uh, but we get the question so often so might as well do an updated video did I say path or a past? The updated, the old path. The old path. <laughs> yeah. The new journey. The new journey. <laughs> Skyrim. Yeah. So we're updating, you know, updating this video a little bit. Yeah. So, and I think it was covered just kind of in a random conversation yeah. too. I think it was. It was also more for like beginner guys. Yeah. So kind of getting into training. This is going to be a little bit more for guys who've already been training. So our community, mm -hmm. the Brown Hatchet community. What are some goody train? Goody. Gosh. Gooder. Gooder. <laughs> I'm starting this video off strong. <laughs> yeah, a lot of new words. Wow. <laughs> uh, I, oh, so yeah, I, I would say let's start off with what's the importance of training? Um, it's gooder. It's gooder. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, disclaimer, we're not going to really call out a whole lot of trainers. No, we won't this, call out anybody. Yeah, call out a whole lot of trainers in this class. Mm -hmm. um, in this guys, class? In this? <laughs> <laughs> I am really screwing yeah, this yeah. video up. We're going <laughs> to leave it in here, though. Yeah. Because uh, that's us. That's yeah, me and screw Eric. it. Screw it. Um, yeah, so we're not going to really talk about a whole lot of trainers. We're just going to say as far as what to look for mm -hmm. in a trainer, what to look for um, when you're actually taking that class, what to, what you what your expectations should be yeah. out of that. So, so kind of starting off the first bullet point, the importance of training. Yeah, um, A, so you can become more proficient, so you can work on all the tactical cool stuff. Tactical. Tactical <laughs> school stuff. No, uh, we get that question constantly all the time, like, yeah. hey, what do you teach? Yeah. Uh, you know what we teach? We teach fundamentals. Yeah, people so ask how many times, hey, how do I learn that cool tactical yep, shooting? Exactly. So what you should be looking for and why you should train is to always continuing to grow um, those those baseline skills, those fundamental skills, being able to produce those at a faster speed. Yeah. We always say, and we, we stole this probably from somebody else down the line, but training is a journey. Like it is a lifelong journey that never stops and it never ends. And if you ever meet somebody that has, that knows it all, that knows how to do everything, sadly they've reached the end of their journey and they are no longer progressing forward. They and have not reached the end of their journey. They're just overconfident and arrogant. Yeah. Um, in their own mind, they've in their reached own their own mind. journey. Yeah. But they have uh, not reached Because they have the not, because yeah. no one has ever reached their own journey. No. Uh, they end of it until, until, you know, um, until you go to a higher place. Yeah. So then your journey is over. <laughs> <laughs> then your journey is in heaven <laughs> or in hell. Yeah. So hopefully it's in heaven. And hopefully you, it's in heaven. Yeah. Uh, so well, yeah. When I mean, it comes to your shooting journey, yeah. uh, you should always be learning. Yeah. So. Import, the training, obviously, is a, we beat this horse all the time, this dead horse to death. This dead horse to death. But <laughs> training is very important. Um, you should always invest in yourself. You should always conduct quality control on yourself as an individual and as a shooter. Yep. Um, and you are the most important investment. So when you're looking for what kind of shooter you want to be, there's two categories that we, we see as, as shooters and or students or instructors is being well-rounded. Yep. We, we strive for us as Brown Hatchet with our training to be a well-rounded shooter, meaning we can okay. shoot rifles, pistols, distance, close-up stuff. Um, we can do everything. Understanding if you're looking to be a well-rounded shooter, you're probably not going to be 
because everything takes so much time in a particular Correct. skill set yeah. um, to to hone in on those skills. Um, you know that that when you when you step away from something, if I step away from a pistol and I want to jump on my rifle, and I and I specifically want to jump on my rifle to really you know shoot distance. Mm. Um, I'm taking a pause from that pistol for a little bit, yeah. and my skill set is probably going to dip a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, just because you have came and made it to here um, with your pistol, your pistol is not going to stay there. Yeah. Or your rifle is not going to stay there. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to try to be the well-rounded shooter, you're you are going to 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 see this mm -hmm. this pattern of up and down, up and down, up and down in your training because you're willing to you're willing to. Um, you're willing to try to try new things. Yeah. You're willing to to step out of your comfort zone. Okay? Manage a lot of skills. Manage a lot of skills. Yeah. And if you're the individual that's looking to manage a lot of skills, you are going to see some ups and downs mm -hmm. and, and a lot of frustrations when it yeah. comes to training. Yeah. Uh, so many times where I'll jump out on the range and I'm really getting aggravated at myself mm -hmm. because I'm not doing something that I know that I can do, yeah. that I've done before in the past. And Eric's like, dude, you've been really focusing on rifle for the past six months. Yeah. So either getting ready for a match or correct. we've had exactly. scope carbine back to back. Yep. Yeah. And and that's something when we're saying well-rounded, we see students get frustrated. Yep. They get frustrated, like say for if they're in a pistol class and you're like, man, I'm so much better. And it's like, yeah, but understand like you pick up the rifle too yep. and you, you you step away from the pistol. So you, you don't get to be a, a one trick pony, yep. right? You don't get to be just a pistol shooter. If you see someone who's extremely good at pistol and that's all they teach, they're going to be really good. They're going to be really good at it. Really and, good. And, at and it. you know what? I, I I suggest taking a class from that guy. Yes. Because that particular individual is you can definitely pick up something in that in that skill set. Mm. Uh, if you if you know taking taking a class with a guy that does nothing but focus on uh, you know appendix carry mm -hmm. pistol classes yeah. and focusing on red dot, yeah. Take that class, yeah. because you're going to learn something from him. Because uh, that is that is his that is his lane. He has mastered he that has one mastered skill. He has mastered that skill, or she has, or mastered. she has. Yeah. Um, so yeah, take a class from that individual. But if you're trying to be that well-rounded individual, you know, uh, and you're willing to step outside your boundaries, that's 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 kind of like what me and Eric do. That's that's what we look for instructors. Mm -hmm. We look for a lot of instructors a lot of times that are kind of more like-minded to us, mm -hmm. uh, to a certain extent, because um, they have they have they have went down you know ups and downs in their in their shooting journey, yeah. uh, based off of that they're willing to they're willing to try something different. Yeah, so. I think the one thing that we'll look for if we are trying to grow a specific skill. We will look for that instructor that only trains in that skill yep. to kind of give Correct. us a boost. Exactly. Like, hey, you figured out the master secrets behind this because that's all you do. Yep. Then we'll go to you to kind of get that specific skill worked on. So you're kind of diagnosing, you know, what specific skill you want to get specific training on, and you go to that one instructor. Or Correct. most time we go to a well-rounded instructors or yep. teach well-rounded exactly. subjects. Exactly. Um, what what we're looking for in an instructor is, you know, is that individual. I know I said it wrong a second ago. I said it where we're looking for somebody that's like exactly like us. That's yeah. not what I meant to say. I had my words backwards as I just continued <laughs> to screw this video all up. It's gooder. It's gooder. <laughs> exactly what Eric said. We look for somebody yeah. that has honed in on a particular mm -hmm. skill set uh, because we want to improve on mm -hmm. that. We go see that particular individual, bring that information back, and then you know, look for another guy. Yeah, it's almost like a, it's like if you're looking for a surgeon and Correct. they have a very specific yeah. skill set, you look for that. Um, but also at the same time, it's good to see your ER doc. You know, it's good to go to that doctor that that trains in everything and is good at all the stuff. So I don't know. No, I've seen a lot of doctors lately. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> yeah, Roy. Really. Uh, well, what should you expect out of an instructor? Um, a very first thing that I should inspect. Uh, in wow. Inspect and expect. Expect out of an instructor. <laughs> Too much caffeine, guys. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Too yeah. much caffeine. Uh, what I should expect out of my instructor, uh, they should demo. They should demo. They should demo. They should be able to show me. Um, I'm, a, I'm a visual learner. Yeah. Um, some people, you can just verbally tell them, and they pick it up. Mm. We've had students before, like I physically just tell them something and they immediately pick it up. It clicks, yeah. It clicks. But for me, I need to physically see you do it, mm -hmm. okay? Um, if I can see you do it and you actually do it, then I will believe that it can obviously happen. It can that's, be done. They can be done. Yeah. That's, that's, that is the way that I learn. Um, 
it's I'm a very simple person. I can't even talk. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't put full sentences together. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> so, so um, but yeah, I need to see you do it. Mm -hmm. Once I see you do it, it builds my level of confidence saying, okay, well, I can strive to meet to that level. Mm -hmm. I may not be there today. I may not be there at the end of this class even. But now I know, okay, well, it, it, this is an obtainable goal. Yeah. So uh, so you should be demoing. Uh, yeah. For me, if I go take a class and that instructor's not demoing, um, I'll try to look for the best that I possibly can mm. out of that class. But I, but I don't typically gain a lot of information mm. uh, just for the fact of just because of the way that I learn. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think also with the instructor, if they are demoing and they're not performing to what they're saying that you should perform at, so if they give you a standard, yeah. they demo the standard, and they don't, they consistently don't perform to the standard that they're asking of you. For me, that's a red flag as far as saying, okay, and if they're coming up with excuses as to why they're not being able to do it, or oh, this, that, and the other. Sometimes, you know, instructors should, they're people, you know, like we yeah, are, you're, we are you're, people. You're, hey, but listen, if it's consistently throughout the correct. entire class where they're not demoing. At, and or not meeting the expectations that they are setting for you as a student, mm -hmm. it should raise a red flag. Like it should be like, I could say, yeah, I drive NASCAR, and all you got to do is push the gas down. But if I can't drive a car, <laughs> then I'm probably not going to take driving lessons from no. somebody like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, you should have an instructor that cares about you. And that's the other thing is like, what an instructor should be is just a professional, we'll talk about this at the end, but a student that's always learning, like mm -hmm. curriculum that's always evolving. There, you know, if you go to a class of ours, it may be different, you know, down the road, the same Those, class. Those um, of you guys that have had the opportunity to come and take a class with us, to train with us, um, and you've taken that same class possibly twice, you can probably, you can attest to it. Like mm -hmm. um, our, our classes are going to evolve because we become different instructors. We've become um, more more um, educated. Yeah, we've in learned that, in that field. Yeah. We, we've went out and we've seek new information to bring that information back to you. Mm -hmm. uh, we've worked on a set skill uh, and we have gotten better at that skill. So now we want to introduce that skill mm -hmm. to you. Um, so yeah, you you will constantly see our classes you always evolved. Mm -hmm. um, and and you should look at it for that out of out of any instructor. Yeah, I mean so. classes that we've taken with the same instructor before has been different. Yep. You know he's evolved. He's learned yep. something. He's like, hey, I used to teach this. Now there's some, a new. Yeah. Curriculum. Sometimes there's things that we just completely drop out. It's like, yeah. man, that you know what that freaking did not work. Yeah. Like like the student was not grasping the mm -hmm. information. There's been in class. There's been classes before where I've been there, and it's like the instructor is teaching me something, and then I'm like, man, this is like. Over my head. It's like yeah. it's going over my head. Yeah. Um, so sometimes I'll take that and I'll put it in my I'll put it in my my, my, my bag mm -hmm. um, for later on to come back to if it's over my head where I just I'm not at that level as far as a shooter wise goes. Right, your skill level. My skill level hasn't knowledge. matched what what they're what they're trying to bring to me. Yeah. But then sometimes it's just like they're they're it's like they're trying to be. What, what am I looking for? You're here? saying an instructor that uses big science words. Yes, thank you. Big science words. I'm a simpleton. Yes. We're both simpletons. So using a big science word to really church up something Correct. that should be a simple concept. I don't want to have to, when we go to break, to reload mags, to have to get my phone out and Google the word that you just told me. <laughs> yeah. so, we're talking about shooting here. Yeah. Um, I don't need to know. Uh, I don't need I don't need big science work. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't I, need all that. So. I can barely do math. I can barely talk right <laughs> yeah, now. So yeah, uh, we we I, I learn very simple. I teach in a very simple mm -hmm. method. So what are some good class expectations versus reality? So like if I'm a student and I'm taking a class, what are some expectations I should have from that class? Yeah, um, and this is where a lot of times people jump into a class and um, where where we will ask the initial questions like okay well, what are you looking you know what are you what are looking, you, what are you looking yeah. to get out of this mm -hmm. class and you always get not always we don't get it too often but in prior in the past um i used to hear this quite often i'm hearing it less and less now uh because sh shooters and and people that are students are are, are, are becoming more educated yeah. um, which i will say specifically for our barrel and hatchet classes yeah. that you guys come into our classes it is a higher caliber of shooter a yeah, higher and performance well, and, I, and even even even, awesome. even even not necessarily as far as always a higher caliber shooter um but you're you're open to learning you're open to learning and you're mm. a little more educated on on what to expect mm. out of that class yeah. okay yeah. so you you have done a little research mm -hmm. uh you've taken a little time 
versus sometimes what we'll get is is, is like, oh man, I'm I'm really wanting to, you know, I'm really wanting to, um, you know, I'm wanting to I'm wanting to do nothing but learn how to reload my gun faster, or mm. I'm wanting to, you know, I'm wanting to learn how to, you know, move and shoot, and I'm wanting to, you know, le- want to learn how to move and shoot and reload. Running I'm, gun. I'm, yeah. I'm wanting to learn how to, to, you know, to to take cover, mm. like a lot of those different types of things. What their expectations are, um, generally speaking. When you're going to take a class, unless it's a class that is focused in on on that running gun aspect mm-hmm. or some type of tactics per se, um, you should expect the fundamentals. Yeah, is yeah. what you should. You should yeah. you should expect um, the baseline of the fundamentals, and then progressing those and in, in stacking those together to do them at a faster speed. Yeah, do it. It's like do. catching a football. Correct. Like. Catching a football is very simple. Yeah. There's not a lot of science behind catching a football, but there's people get paid a lot of money to catch a football. Yeah. Right? So that's the don't don't uh, if you come and take a class, whether it's from us or you go take a class from any instructor, um, that instructor is going to pound. If they're a solid instructor, they're going to pound in on the fundamentals. If it's if it's a, if it's a pistol, they're going to focus in on your grip. Mm. They're going to pretty much spend, if it's a one day class or two day class, they're going to pretty much spend the entire class focusing on your grip. Yeah. And that is what. A baseline fundamental, fundamental skill, yeah. um, and 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 I didn't I didn't come up with this. Uh, I, I believe uh, I was watching a video one time. Uh, ben Stoger worded it absolutely perfect. You know, phenomenal grandmaster shooter. Mm-hmm. Um, he said he goes, "We are always working on the fundamentals. We are just putting them together at a faster speed." Mm. The difference between me, you know, aka him, him and, the, and the students that he was instructing is is I'm just putting these fundamental skills together. Faster, faster. That's all I'm doing. Yeah, that's why. That's why I'm better. That's yeah. it. Like, yeah. uh, and I'm always progressing to put those skills together. I'm building that grip. Mm. I'm building that sight picture. I'm More, building that yeah. target transition. I'm mm. building all that stuff. Um, I'm adding that movement in. Mm. I'm adding the movement in with my fundamental skills. Yeah. I still have to. Have, my my grip can't fall apart. Yeah. Just because I took a, I've gotten off the X. Yeah. And, and that's basically what you should look for. Yeah. Um, well, I will also say with the class, we, we've seen this before in other classes where a student will come in and it's ex- expecting to just automatically become better. A class 100%. is there to expose you to information. Generally, so whenever we, yeah. whenever we get a class, we are getting exposed right. information and it's something to, it's food for thought for us to, manip- to manipulate in our minds, to chew on for a long period of time, and then practice over and over again to master the skill. So it should be exposure, not the fix to your right. problem as far as like, I'm going to instantly be faster. Yes, you may, it may be drastic enough where you learn, okay, I didn't know the fundamental I, I, of this, if I'm and now I'm drastically class, If faster. I'm taking a class and I've, I've, I've went and say, I've taken pistol classes, especially pistol, and I keep coming back to pistol because of the skill set of... It's, it's a harder, it's, ma- it's a harder, harder skill method. to master, yeah. okay? Um, so uh, I've, I've taken a pistol class before where I physically did not get better in that class. Mm. That was fine. Yeah. But the instructor gave me the tools and the information that I needed to go back on my own mm. and take that time um, to not necessarily just go jump straight into another class, mm. to absorb that information and put those tools that they gave me into play. So now I am picking up tenths of a second. Yeah, but um, through lots of your own practice. Correct, lots of my own practice. Yeah. I, I the, the instructor gave me the information, mm-hmm. gave me the know-how, Moving I've down. absorbed it. Yep. Now I just have to put it into play. I may not necessarily do that in a class always. Mm. Okay. Uh, we see so many times that the head becomes hung, or we get the apology, like, "Oh yeah. man, I'm sorry." Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't it. don't apologize. Yeah. You didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Like you not performing to a level of where you think you should mm-hmm. be is not a reason to apologize. No. I know when I'm a student, like I'm not there to impress the instructor. Correct. I'm there to mess up. I am there for I need I'm like I want you to I'm see my see that they're my going mistakes, to find flaws. In yeah. Cuz then they can provide me a fix. Correct. They can provide me a solution to my problem I have. If so. I go to a class and they find absolutely zero flaws in me and they say I'm like, "Dude, you're pretty freaking squared away." Yeah. Then maybe it's time to level up to a new instructor. Exactly. You know, time to level up for right. someone else that can find more detailed flaws. Um, and what I can do to shave those tenths of seconds off. As you start your performance-based journey, once you learn the fundamentals, you're gonna be saving off whole seconds. 
step. Like go from five second draw to er, a yeah, two second er, draw. Er, early on. And early then, on. And, yeah, if you're early on in your journey, yeah, you're you're probably going to see some massive change when you first take a class. Correct. But uh, as you get you, closer, you more experienced shooters. Yes. As you're getting into that realm, it's like man. Um, you know, I'm really trying to hone in on you know on tenths of a second type mm -hmm. stuff like that. I'm trying to I'm trying to cut this time down just yeah. a little bit. Um, I'm trying to become a little bit more proficient. Um, you may not gain that in that class. Mm -hmm. um, newer shooters, yeah, you're probably going to gain it. We see it all the time where where they come and take some, take some type of baseline red dot pestle class from us, and they start the class out and they're drawing at two and a half seconds, mm -hmm. and they're down to 1.5 by the time the end of the class yeah. comes. Okay, um, you have more. It's kind of like your fitness journey mm -hmm. at the same time. Uh, those that have always, you know, uh, whether you're trying to cut weight or you're trying to gain muscle or something, whatever it is, generally speaking, when you start into that journey, you're probably going to see the biggest amount of effects early on. Yeah. You start in your weight loss journey and you go to lose weight, you're losing two to three pounds a week. Yeah. And then as you start to get closer to what your goal is, okay, I'm trying to get down to 175 pounds, whatever it may be, now I'm losing half a pound or not even a whole pound. Sometimes I'm even gaining a pound back. Yeah. That's the same way when it comes yeah. to your, your, your shooting journey. Yeah. It becomes harder and harder to grasp and get closer to that goal. Yeah. As the faster you get. As the faster you get. Yeah. So. And that's just, that's a natural form and of progression. And that's something to expect when you go to take a class. Correct. If you're, if you're a higher level performing shooter, um, understand that that you that you've reached the point in time in your journey when you go to take a class um that it's going to be more difficult to mm. to to get to that next level uh and take that information that that instructor gave you um with those little flaws that you have and you may not you may not be able to put them into play during that day mm. but take your take the next six months before you go jump in another class yeah and to, work on those to really chew on it yeah I think something else is you have a limited amount of time in the day. You have 24 yep. hours in a day, however much of that you're awake. So you have limited amounts of time to work on specific skills. So yep. you need to pick and do research on what skills are realistically worthy of your time. Um, you know, we talk about in our class all the time, like, hey, you know, like, let's just pick out the speed reload, for example. It's yep. It should be a 10% skill, meaning you should not put yourself at a point where situationally, you are having to speed reload because you're attack reloading, you're topping and, off the gun, and you're not putting correct. yourself in a situation where now it's an emergency and I have to speed reload. Yes, you should learn the skill. Yes, yep. you should be fast at it, but you shouldn't dictate your entire training on one specific skill set. It should be spreading that time out on the things that matter the most um, that are providing you the most gains is what you should put your work on. What do you think? It, it, I agree 100%. We didn't come up with this, you know, that method. No. Uh, it was taught to us by an, another instructor. Yeah. Um, but the 10% the skill. Yeah. Um, how much time should I focus on the 10% skill? You, the, the, you know, find what those 10% skills are. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully you have a class or an instructor. That's what you're looking for. Uh, if, the, if the instructor is spending a ton of time on those 10% skills, mm -hmm. um, you're probably not going to gain a lot in yeah. that class. Uh, sometimes the fancy stuff, like the speed reload, you mm -hmm. know, the, the, the super cool looking stuff, um, is, it happens to be a 10% skill. Yeah. Um, that's not something that generally speaking, statistically wise goes, that happens a lot. Yeah. Um, if you look at people that have had the opportunity um, to do this professionally, mm -hmm. Where they carry a gun, you know, for a living to, you know, to, you know, on the streets or, 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 you know, whether a, 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 a concerned citizen, you know, armed citizen mm -hmm. that uh, that has done it professionally, where they've had to use, you know, their firearm in a defensive situation, law enforcement, military, you know, uh, GWAT guys, all, yeah. you know, just the amount of experience that is out there, and you look at the statistics wise, it goes how often that those guys actually speed reload. Yeah. It's very low. Yeah. Very, very low. Yeah. So that happens to fall in that category as a 10% skill. How much time am I going to focus on that? I'm going to focus on it until I know how to do it. Mm. And then I'm going to put it back off to the side and just let it naturally happen. Yes. Sprinkle it into your drills as it sprinkle comes in. Sprinkle it in. Yeah. Let it just naturally happen in my yeah. drills. So. What are, what is the, so I, I want to talk about a lot of the questions that we get is, like you said, I want to learn how to do run and gun. I want to learn tactical stuff. Well, we get the question so much that people send us a message like, hey, I want to do, um, one of the things we get a lot, um, we, uh, you, mo a lot of you may know us for um, JTAC Ranch and the open gym sessions, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, open gym is, is, is a lot of fun. Yeah. 
okay? Uh, there's a lot of movement. There's a lot of things that are coming into play. Uh, there's obstacles. There's, you know, um, movement around things. There's weights. weights yeah. There's there's just a ton of different variables in layers yeah. that are there that you have to break down as far as the shooter wise yeah. goes. And and it and it looks fantastic and it's awesome. Um, that's is it training? Yes, it is training. Mm -hmm. But you have to you have to separate those layers. Mm -hmm. So we get that question constantly all the time is like, oh, how do I do what you guys do in open gym? Mm -hmm. How do I do this running gun? I want to do yeah. all that kind of stuff like that. Um, you got to break those layers down. Yeah. You you can't just naturally just jump all in at one time. Yeah. Would you yeah. agree? Yeah. I mean, you're building a house on sand, right. and this and the rock that you need is that fundamental you have zero foundation. foundation. You need a fundamental foundation in performance, and then you slowly build those things in. It's the same reason why whenever we have our classes or you go to a class. We're running slick. If I'm learning some new skill set, I'm not wearing body armor, I'm not wearing chest rig, I'm, I'm wearing as little amount of equipment as I can and only wearing what I need so I can master the skill Yep. and then I can add in those layers as I start to perfect the skill set. So then it's like, okay, I'm pretty good at doing this. What's it like running a, a body armor? Mm -hmm. You know, what, how's that gonna change things? Yep. How's that gonna change my draw? Or is it, am I have to move things on my body armor because of my draw is fundamentally sound, so I need to move my equipment to allow me to perform sound fundamentals. But I only know that because I strip away all of those all of those implements. So I think whenever you are looking to take a tactical class mm -hmm. or a, you know like a, a running gun class, you need to first focus on performance-based classes first, yep. build a solid foundation, and then start looking at a tactical class. So when when you take a tactical class is when you're looking for is, is you have a solid foundation in performance-based shooting. So once you do that, now I'm if I take a tactical class, I can actually focus on the tactics because I'm not worried about holster draw, I'm not worried about the fundamentals, and I'm not being a safety hazard to everybody around me because I don't know the fundamentals, and now I'm trying to do these tactical tasks or these other tasks and shoot, and now I become a hazard. So having a strong foundation in performance, one, it's your responsibility as yep. a student, and two, you're gonna get more out of the class anyways and not feel so overwhelmed. Um, but with a tactical class, you also need to vet your instructors. Yep. And the difference between performance-based and tactical is tactical training is usually instructed by somebody who's been on a two-way range, yep. right? They have the experiences and they're telling you, here's what works because I have experience in that type of situation, right? And also, you have to take their word for it. Correct. You have to take your word that their tactic works. Um, and performance-based shooting, you can usually take that instruction, immediately apply it, and see a result. You can typically see, you can typically just see it, uh, you can apply it immediately. The, the instructor mm -hmm. can demo it to you. Mm -hmm and show you, and you like, like that this particular skill set works. And that's, that's why I, you know, I, I'm a huge on demoing and I'm a visual learner because once again, that, that instructor can show me, okay, um, that, is, that is possible that I can, you know, that I can, you know, that I can get behind my, I can get down, get into position behind my glass, read my win mm -hmm. at 600 yards mm -hmm. and put a round on the target the first shot. Yeah. Or within you know within two shots or yeah. something like that, uh, and I can do that in a set time frame. Right. Okay. Um, you know, that to me um, weighs very heavily, and that's how I learn because I can see that 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 physically happens. Versus tactics, sometimes you're just just like what Eric said, um, you're taking the word. Mm -hmm. You're taking you're taking it like okay, well because you've got you've done this job before, mm -hmm. um, so I got I got to take that advice from you, and it's very difficult to put into play. Yeah, I mean because he can't go down range and start shooting at you to yeah. show that that it works, <laughs> Correct. right? So exactly. You, at the end, and now he could his work could be very strong because yeah, I mean you could take a Sims class, yeah, or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Now um, you, you can, can start you, putting you, that you into can practice. start putting in that into practice. Yeah. Um, so once again, breaking that down in layers, um, finding an instructor that that teaches those ta those tactics, mm -hmm. um, but. I can tell you, I've taken I've taken um, performance-based classes where we still have shot sims, mm -hmm. UMTs, and stuff like that at the end of the class. Yeah, and I was able to apply those performance-based yeah. skills yeah. Uh, so much that you've seen guys bring in the units mm -hmm. performance-based shooting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now you've got tier one units that bring in competition shooters yep. and guys who shoot professionally for speed and accuracy to kind of teach them performance-based. So even in the military level in those really special Which performance-based shooting is what? It's just the fundamentals at speed. That's it. It's the fundamentals at speed. And those guys realize that, so they bring in those experts to do that. I think with a good tactical class is 
one, the instructor is also able to perform. Mm -hmm. He's able to do those fundamentals and perform them fast and do them well. Um, two, he has a good background and also experience in a two-way shooting range or has, you can take his word for it because of ex his experience. Um, the other thing also is they're constantly learning, constantly evolving, and staying in the tactical world as far as what is still relevant today. Because yeah. warfare or things change. Right now, for example, yep. in Ukraine, um, you're seeing a lot of the guys who are in Ukraine fighting that fight right now on both sides. Instead of whenever they run empty on mags, they're not speed reloading. Yep. They're attack reloading because they're trying to save their mags because it's a precious item over there. Mm -hmm. So they're really focusing a lot more on attack reloading versus just ditching the mag and throwing it. Mm -hmm. So they want to retain that magazine, so they're doing a lot more attack loads. That's something that's cool, but that has changed throughout warfare. You're seeing different tactics being applied, so your instructor needs to be staying up to date on tactics, able to perform, meaning they're not saying, oh, well, I, I'm performing at this speed because it's tactical shooting. Mm -hmm. No, it's like, no, no. Yep. You should have a solid performance-based standard and being able to perform. We know some really good instructors yep. who teach tactical shooting, and they stay very up-to-date on their performance-based training. Um, and also, they involve, I think involving sims is yes. a great way to help prove your theory in tactics. Um, so I now would strive very, for that. Being very cautious and very vetting of yes, your instructor. Yes, you have to vet a lot more. Very vetting in your instructor when it comes to SIMS, when it comes to UMTs. Yeah, yeah. uh, a, because you're in, you're introducing a whole other layer that could obviously be very dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, could be even life-threatening or yeah. ending. You know, I've, we've seen stories before. Yeah. If you've been around long enough, you've seen it happen <laughs> before. Um, so very vetting of your instructor when it comes to UMTs and SIMS and stuff like that. But that is a uh, having someone that has that ability to offer that, when you, especially when you're talking about taking a tactics class, um, whether that's a solo tactics class where you're looking to defend your home yeah. and learning how to defend your home. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, uh, I see it constantly all the time. I see one of the, in, especially in our particular area, and I'm sure it's the same for you guys in your area. Um, you know, comment down below if you see this a lot when you're just kind of looking up for classes. Uh, I will see like home defense classes. Mm -hmm. And then I'll jump on that individual's website or something like that and kind of do a little bit of research and look and see what they're offering. And I see it and I'm like, holy crap, this guy's going to get somebody killed. Wow. You know, type stuff. Mm. Like uh, taking that time to vet, to, to, to vet that instructor yeah. um, even more when it comes to the tactics mm -hmm. side of it. Um, because there, there is a, there's a lot of great instruction out there that can point you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of people that are very well versed and very experienced in yeah. that. Uh, that just like what Eric said, uh, they're staying up with the times. They're they're not just selling you something. They're not selling you snake oil because it sounds cool. Or selling you their ego. They're selling your ego. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a lot of instructors out there that are just selling you something because it sounds cool. Uh, yeah. I hear it all the time. People come into the shop and they're like, "Hey, you know, I want to take a class." Uh, I was like, "Okay, well, what do you, you know?" Um, you know what? What are you looking for, or something like that? Well, uh, you know, I want to. I want to take. I want to take a home defense class, or mm. I want to take some tactical stuff. Yeah. You know, I hear that quite often. I want to take some tactical stuff. Um, and and then, you know, as an instructor, I vet my student. Mm. Is your instructor vetting your students? Yeah. Is your instructor vetting you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, to see where you are as a as a shooter to, mm. within your journey. Someone comes to me for private lessons. I can tell you right now, if I've never shot with you before. I'm going to vet you. <laughs> I'm going to vet you, and we're going to start with the bare bone basics. Yeah. We're going to start with so much with the basics is you're going to show me that you know how to load your gun properly and, and unload good your gun properly and that you know the four fundamental safety rules. It usually takes uh, about two minutes to correct. figure it out. Exactly, yeah. and after about 30 seconds, I yeah. generally know where yeah. you are, yeah. um, and then that, that bases that private lesson. Mm -hmm. You know, we get that message so often, hey, I want to take a private lesson because I want to do open gym. Mm -hmm. I want to prepare myself for an open gym, and we go do a private lesson for somebody, it's like, you should take a, let's do some more private lessons. Let's do some yeah. more private lessons. Let's do some yeah. more one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Let's do some more, uh, come, take a, come take a fundamentals class with yeah. us. Come take yeah. a baseline class with us. Mm -hmm. um, really vetting those instructors uh, across the entire board, uh, even more so in the tactics world. Yeah, a hundred percent. Even you, more in the tactics You have world. to vet. There's a lot, it's like karate. There's a lot of snake oil instructors <laughs> got, out there. There's like all, you ever see the bad karate videos? Yes, it is like Holy bad smokes. karate yeah. videos. Like <laughs> you have to be a lot more careful with what you're seeing and vetting them. And then also making sure like Roy was saying, that they're staying up to date. Yep. Um, that is such a huge thing. Um, and, and as far as tactics classes, you shouldn't be looking at just home defense. Like, the biggest deterrent is a prepared citizen. Yep. Like the biggest deterrent is a person who goes out and trains. So 
um, whether that's a, you know, a foreign or domestic enemy, you are the best deterrent by training. So having a company that's a tactical company, but offering all different types of classes yeah. and then finding instructors who are subject matter experts in that specific tactical field. Yep. Like if, if you know you got a guy who does CQB, it's a very specific tactical skill. Finding an instructor who used to do something that was very good at that, and that's all they did, versus someone who does like vehicle small unit stuff. tactics or vehicle stuff yep. or patrolling. Um, medical is yep. also a big one. Like we have medical classes. Roy and I help out Todd, who is the subject matter expert Correct. for that medical class. We do not teach that class. Yeah. We, we just, just help out. We just help out. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, we are AI in that particular yes. class because yeah. I'm not a, I, I am not the expert in that particular class. Mm -hmm. uh, I am learning that skill set. Forever will be learning that skill set. Yeah. Uh, I do not have any real world experience when it comes to it for the yeah. most part. Um, a little bit. Recently, uh, yeah. Recently, yeah. I've, I've applied a tourniquet a couple yeah, times yeah. <laughs> recently. So. Uh, not by gunshot wounds, but yeah. just typical natural um, life occurrences that, yeah. you'll, that you may experience. And yeah. most likely, if you're talking about taking a medical class, um, A, that you're instructor for that too. Yeah. Um, but um, that those skills that you learn in a medical class, you probably won't hardly ever use on the range. Yeah. You know, so uh, you'll probably use it in just a real life situation. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. Yeah, I think the the biggest thing is vetting vetting those instructors. And then as far as your tactical classes, what you should look at, there's so many resources that you can access for free. Mm -hmm. The Ranger Handbook, let's just start there. So get the Ranger Handbook. Go, you can go get all kinds of Army manuals and field manuals to learn on your own. And then also look at things that apply to your life. You know, if you live in a very urban area, you might want to start looking at vehicle, to, uh, maybe a CQB class, something like that. And or if you live of, in a rural of, area. What kind of guys' prior experience when it comes to like vehicle? Um, looking at instructors, yeah. um, uh, you know, uh, we get asked all the time, hey, you know, you guys teach any vehicle classes? No, I don't teach any vehicle classes because you know what? Yeah, I drive a vehicle every day, but I, I didn't, I haven't literally fought around a vehicle yeah. uh, mm -hmm. that often. Guys that have done that kind of stuff mm -hmm. for a living, like yeah. uh, guys that have, have been you know that gray man yeah. type type atmosphere where they're you know they're you know they're moving people in vehicles they're moving around vehicles yeah. their vehicles have been under attack uh, a lot of law enforcement guys mm -hmm. you know law enforcement guys um, uh, they they spend a lot of time in and out of vehicles. They yeah. spend a lot of time, most of the time, fighting from their vehicles. Yeah, or fighting Which is around than or fighting around their vehicles. That the tactics versus using a vehicle as like a barricade Correct. or an obstacle exactly. for just to, just for fun. Um, but they have taken time to learn. Uh, those guys have done that. They've taken the time to learn their vehicle as as a skill set. Yes, person, say just yeah. just outside of just using it and 100%. working around it. So, yeah. So at the end of the day, make sure you guys are, and this is kind of what we want to end on, is Roy and I say this all the time, but we are professional students. Yes, we instruct. Yes, we have a training company. But at the end of the day, we are constantly evolving. We can't even talk and we have a training company. <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you, we speak in very simple layman's terms. So if you can't understand us, I'm sorry. But like, yeah. We Sometimes speak we're probably planning. so difficult to understand just because we can't talk. Yeah, we're, so, we're such simpletons. But like, yeah, being a professional student, it's a, one, it's exciting for us because we constantly get to learn stuff. We love to learn. And at the same time, we love to instruct and share what we've learned on our journey. Um, but you should always be a professional student. No matter what you do, whether you're an instructor, whether you're a student, whether you're in the industry or not, always continuing on that journey. Um, like Jerry Mislett said, you can never be more fast or more accurate. You yeah. can always find something to be better at. Um, so yeah. Uh, how do they support us? Probably the best way to support us outside of liking and subscribing to our channel. Yeah. Um, to help us with the algorithm. And commenting. I love the comment to say, this is for the algorithm. This I was like, oh man, cool. Outside of that, because you yeah. guys do a great job of that, yeah. obviously continue doing that. We greatly appreciate it. We try to get in there and try to read as many of them as we possibly can mm -hmm. and comment back to them. Uh, but jumping on our website, picking up a piece of, uh, piece of gear, mm -hmm. signing up for a class. Um, we love training with you. Uh, we love learning with you. Uh, that's probably one of my favorite things to do about this community is to have the opportunity to physically get out there on the range and 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 do the same things that you enjoy doing yeah to experience to see to see it in someone's face when they you know uh, to, to they really adapt that skill yeah. that we're talking about um, to see it in my face like one's like man I was not expecting that guy to yeah. do that yeah it's usually like, we'll yeah, read, dude, let's the, go. On, our, on our classes dude we'll talk about it yeah. in the you know in the car ride home we'll be like dude I got more energized after the class correct because it's just such an awesome time training with you guys yeah. and, and training with our community. So that is one of the best ways to support us is uh, sign up for a class come mm -hmm. take a class with us. Um, 
Come take a medical class with us. Yes, Todd's, Todd's an amazing Todd is an instructor. amazing instructor. Uh, I know it's only hosted here in the Central Florida area. Eventually, it will expand on. Um, but if yeah. you're here on vacation, you're here on summer vacation with your family, mm -hmm. um, man, um, take try to get a minute away from it. Uh, we typically host that class at least once a month. Mm -hmm. It is a phenomenal class to take. Todd is a fantastic instructor. We got to get him on here for an episode so yeah. he can kind of talk about it a little bit and explain, you know, the mindset behind the class mm -hmm. and the way that he developed the curriculum. Yep. Um, not just necessarily for the shooter, yeah. but just for the concerned citizen and prepared citizen. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, take a class from us. Purchase a tourniquet off of our website if you want to. Yeah, they are actually North American tourniquets. Yep. And uh, as far as the traveling thing, that is something we're going to look into. Um, it is for the future, but just kind of stay up to date. If you go check out our Instagram page, that's really a great way to stay up to date on what we're doing, kind of the direction that we're heading, or anything about classes or gear or stocks or when, when things yep. restocking. Also, check out Rumble. All the videos that are on Rumble. Do you have to pay for Rumble? No. <laughs> Every video that's on YouTube is also on Rumble, so go check us out there. And then also our Hatchet Cast podcast on Spotify. We're going to try and be more active on that, but we do post guest-only podcasts on there. So, yeah, go train. Would you guys like to listen to these episodes, us rambling Yeah. for 30, 45 minutes? <laughs> yeah. I barely, enjoy rambling. Barely putting, barely sentences. putting sentences together. <laughs> uh, all right, guys, go ahead and be a professional student. Make sure the asset, not the liability, and we'll see you on the next episode. Love you guys. Yeah, straight up. We love you.